what's going on people welcome back welcome back to casey details um today we're doing a very nice different very different but very nice car um i just realized i haven't uploaded any of these vlogs i want to call them vlogs but they're also you know things that i come across on cars that you know that i know they you know it's like it's like um things that I haven't i have come across before but not as much so if someone is starting out or someone's you know a few years into their career as a detailer and valeter etc it, it it can help them it might be the first time they've come across it so um you know it's little spikes uh the, the tip of the iceberg no the tip of the spike I swear that's a different meaning. Anyway, guess it. If you can guess it, you've got 10 seconds. Pause the video. Guess it. Write in the comments what you think it is. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? It's a Volvo. It's a Volvo XC90. Beautiful family car. Let's have a quick look around. Check it. Check it. Beautiful thing. Just did the uh, wash and uh, iron four large decontamination outside. We've got tar left, we've got clay bar left. Now this is wet, right? Look at that. That's wet. So it's, imagine if it was dry. Um, very contaminated. And we've got moss growing there. Use the pressure of the washer to get as much of it off as possible. Some of it came off, mm, some of it didn't. Um, and yeah, so this is what we're working on, full decontamination, sorry, excuse me, full correction and full, uh, well, the best coating that I can do, five year base, giving you the uh, scratch resistance, UV protection and la and just general maintenance of the, of, the, of, of the car, so it keeps it clean, keeps it, you know, um, cleaner for longer or self cleaning capabilities hydrophobics and so on and so forth um, and it also locks in the color so when i polish it oxidization aka the damage the sun does to your paint it's drastically reduced um and that's up to five years and then on top of that we're going to put an 18 marks coat in we at kc we I, I don't like to mess around when i say we i say me i don't like to mess around i only want the best i can buy give service products and services that is that is it i don't i don't want anything in between now I'm trying to try my best to hide the number plate as you can see um and you might be thinking casey okay, the wheels are still dead yes they are because this is these are going for reflux so if you guys don't know i'm actually doing a bunch of other stuff other than detailing not myself in particular but i um outsource them to local uh, businesses um, in the London area that I know I've worked before with and they can produce some great great work um, at reasonable cost to the to the client and of course I can go top tier stuff but I mean why would you pay double the amount of money for the same product you know beautiful and also there's badges over here. I'm trying not, I'm trying not to get those badges. Those badges, one of them is an old badge, so that's gonna be coming off. Um, it's a resident parking badge. That was the old one, that's coming off. And the interior is gonna get detailed, so vacuum. Any area that needs cleaning will get cleaned. Anything in particular that needs doing, it will get done. It's nothing crazy major. What is going on here? annoying um yeah also got a sheet it's a very basic sheet this is what we used to do in the shop a long time ago. oh by the way guys there's a little bit of changes and stuff so i've got like a little kitchen area here and i'm actually getting a kitchen area built and i was very specific about something i said look guys i want i want the um what oh, is ppf this is this is ppf i want the kitchen to be made out of some of the old wood that we had in the shop so there was before i came in there was like some other tables and stuff here 
Um, so we took that apart and we're going to make that out of it. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. So this is something similar to what we used to do in the accident repair shop. Only reason I'm doing this is because, you know, one is you know, extra security for myself and it's, a, it's just a nice little thing to give back to the client to say, look, you did have these issues prior and I managed to, you know, even though it wasn't really my job, I'm not going to say that obviously, but even though it wasn't really my job, I did X, Y, Z for you and I recommend this, that and the other if X, Y, Z happens, you know, I use a lot of... Um, uh, abbreviations but you know anyway let's get started first things first we actually need to take the wheels off i believe that's what we might need to do or oh, i might need to clay bar it the time now that's my dad the time now is 9 23 so by the time we get done with the wheels it's gonna be about it's not gonna be during tr um bad traffic so that's a good thing but then if i take the wheels off i Definitely can't move the car, so I need to make sure everything else is pushed you. Anyway, let's get started. And one last thing, if you guys didn't know, I actually debadge every single car that I work on. I can't work on a car that's badged. Now there's a lot of, uh, I say tricks or something. Uh, I, all right, tricks, let's call it trick. Um, there's, there's tricks and stuff, but you, I just know underneath here, it's not polished. Underneath the seat, excuse me, I'm still using, uh, my camera, my phone camera, so it's kind of hard for me to, you know, when I'm looking, I'm lo not looking through the camera of the phone, I'm looking at over, so it's hard for me to adjust, but yeah, um, it's, it's, I know it's underneath here, it hasn't been polished, and on the edge, right on the edge, I know, like, right inside that X, it hasn't been polished, like right there, or right there, or right there, so that bugs me, or in here, now there's tools and stuff like that, but I'll be honest with you, I've got the tools, but you guys might have seen me using it, but it's not about that. I, it's going to bug me. So I need to do that. I need, that needs to come off. Um, and yeah, not too, not too shabby. Welcome back, peeps. So um, just taking the wheels off. I'm using, I'm using obviously the... Um, I don't know what's it called. The special nut, the special key. Every, every car gets one. It essentially helps to um, stop thieves from just rocking up and feeding the wheels. But if you can see here, it's a bit of play there. Now if I put this in there and try to twist, it wouldn't really, go, it wouldn't really work out too well because in there, I'm gonna get a light on it one second. So if we have a quick look inside, if I can get the light on it just right, you can see there's a bit of debris on the right side. There you go. What I do, squeeze the noise. I should have taken it out. Nope, it's still in there. Alright, I'm gonna have to get the tweezers. And that is the culprit right there. Piece of rubber, whatever it is. If I had carried on, that would have been goodbye to the um to these little teeth on the Volvo key, you see? And uh, this ain't like steel or anything, it's a very soft metal. Um, and I would have been screwed, essentially. There you go, there's no more play. Awesome, let's carry on. Hands have become very dirty, but Part of the job, right? Got the wheels off, got that sorted, taking it to get it refurbed. Now it's time for look, it looks like it's hovering. That's pretty cool. How cool is that? Um, yeah, now it's time for uh, first things first, tar removal, and then clay bar. And then I'm going to have an inspection of the paint. I can already see. There has been someone, um, that was something I was putting out for myself. And there has been someone that has polished this car at some point, so that's polished with you right now. Um, so that's that's good to know. The wheels came off pretty decent, only issue was 
um, on this side. So we had the uh, locking bolt that was really annoying to take off. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and this is what we need to sort out. So I'm gonna to get to this in a second. Let's start the tar and clay bar. We've done a fallout already outside when I washed it first. Happy days. So I just wanna quickly show you guys something, okay? Um, I went and bought some bits and bobs. So I went, dropped off the wheels and went to Slim's, got some stuff, okay? While I did that, charged my, um, let me show you. So I charged my, my two main stuff, inspection light, back light. This, so two Kosh um, a yellow thingy, pad, 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 pad. That was 250 quid. Now, now that's 250 quid. Now, I want you guys to understand. Now, this is for the general public. This is not for other validators and detailers because you guys already know the price of stuff. It's not cheap. It really isn't cheap. So forget about the time just the products 250 quid for pads you might you, so, so, you think I'm joking like look online it's no joke so bear that in mind and with all due respect to anyone that's out there because I was out there once in my life as well if they do come to your house with one pad and one polish you're gonna you're gonna get a great hood where they start off and then it's just gonna deteriorate. And I saw this for myself. I went and I did an S3 and the S3 was coated and I co and it was fine at this side of the hood, right? And then it just got worse. And then at that point when I got to this side, there was no correction. Like there was whatsoever there was no correction whatsoever. And you can see that literally the 50, 50 it was like a 50-50 before and after. And I said to the client, I said, What's happened there? He's like, Oh yeah. Um, he he turned up. He, I was like, what kind of equipment did he had? And he had this, he had that, just one pad. And um, using the green pad with the um, uh, show show concepts, you know the 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 go to for beginners. And he's like, oh yeah, he charged him about four hundred and fifty quid or something like that. And that's all he did. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then the coating was exactly the same. The coating here was decent and then it just gradually became nothing and I was and I videoed it um just to make sure you know the client saw you know I foamed it up and the client saw it's just like you can clearly see like a 50 50 um where I think the 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 the, the validator at that point or the detail whoever the individual wants to call himself genuinely just was trying to be cheap with it like towards the end he realized oh my god you know, either he brought a small amount for a big car or, you know, like a 300, 300, uh, 30 mil for instead of when he was supposed to use a 50 or he just used something that he was left over from another job. I don't know, but long story short, working this way, working round, the other side, there was nothing there. It was just gradually left less and less. So I decided it was good. The other side was terrible. There was no coating on it. And I videoed it and then the audacity... Um, after I cleaned that car, obviously the, the client had already said, um, you know, XYZ was here, Casey Details was here. He, at the time, he he, well, he thought I was my competition, I was, this guy's not my competition. Um, he went and gave him a free clean, and then in the video he goes, oh, there was another detailer here, he's taking off the coating, and I'm over here like, shall I just, you know, released a video where they I foamed it you know no contact nothing just just foam rinse and a foam and then there's clear evidence where there's no coating on the right side of the car and there's and it's decent coating at the front left and then it gradually gets worse to the right and the back and I was like shall I do that or shall I just let him be and I just I you know what? I, 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 I let him be I, I still got the video I let him be and Later on, he messages me or something about wet sand and whatever. Long story short, you know, I've been there. There's a long, very long story, but I've been there. I've been mobile. I'm still mobile. Um, I'm thankful for the for the four door, four walls and the door and, and that I'm on right underneath right now. Um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, it's not cheap. The products are not cheap. 
there are cheap people out there. I'm not one of them. I can't be one of them. Everything's got my name on it. So, you know, um, it comes with the territory, I guess. And, um, yeah, if there's anyone out there that's getting their cars detailed, wherever you are in the world, and it's a reputable place that you're going to, please, please understand that it's... The, the products alone is, is expensive, let alone the knowledge that they've learned over the years and years. I mean, I've got just in accident repair, I've got 10 years. That you can't buy that. You can't buy that experience. It's priceless. So with KC Details alone, it's three years. So, and yeah. Anyway, back to the car. Enough showboating, self trumpet blowing, I don't know, whatever. Let's get back to the car. Let's take these numbers, number plates off. Let's take the badge off. Um, and then let's get to it. So we've got the um, number plate off, right? So I've actually wiped this down. I've actually cleaned it. But let me show you guys. I've actually cleaned it. Done the front as well. But you see here, that needs to be polished out. And the front, I wanna show you guys something as well. So this happens two ways. See these scratches here? Oh, sorry, awesome. See these scratches here? There's a, a plastic cover like that. That's the plastic cover, or that plastic cover. It goes on here, but when, when you're driving, and then this is obviously um, plastic, and it flexes and it moves, it rubs against it. And that, that's what it causes. Here, is build up of dirt over time, as you can see. And there's a nice little camera there. Awesome. Let's keep going. So we got a mark mask up. We'll start taking it off in a second, guys. If you run into this, just take it off, please. Stop using this dumb methods. Oh, let's use this, then. Just take it off. Polish underneath it. Polish the the actual thing itself. And then carry on you living your best life. The time you spend trying to do all this toothpick stuff is stupid. I don't know, that's my personal opinion. If there's other people out there that find it easier to do the, the exact thing, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I can't stand knowing that underneath there hasn't been polished. Underneath that, that is sick. It's just underneath it hasn't been polished. Whether you polish around it or not, it doesn't matter. Underneath it hasn't been polished. and. I feel like the time spent doing that is just meh. Beautiful. So, got the badges off. Um, the badges themselves are getting their glue taken off somewhere else. Let's get started on the rest of the um, tar removal. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So, you can see what I was talking about earlier. Obviously, I've dislodged all the gunk. You can see, and that channel is clearish now, meaning there's still gunk in there, but it's loose gunk. So what I'm gonna do with a hoover, wet back hoover, and a little bit of a spray gun. I'm gonna sludge all of it and take it all out. On your corner. Wow. What's going on, people? Um, while I clean by this door, I'm going to talk about something that's quite important to me. Now, this has got nothing. Well, it does. It's got stuff to do with business. It's got stuff to do with money, but it has something to do with business. The thing I want to talk about is equality. What that means is treating everybody the same way. Now, with me, I don't do discounts. 
based on who you are and your standing to me. I will definitely look after you, I'll give you extra stuff. That's not a problem, that's my gift to you. But in terms of discounts, oh yeah, you're my mate, I'm gonna give you X amount off or a percentage off or five or ten or whatever it may be. I don't particularly do that. You're my mate, I'm gonna give you a free this or a free that, but it's not a, a business transaction, it is a gift. It's a gift to you. Like I wouldn't even put it on the invoice, for example. You might be thinking, Casey, why is that? The reason being is when it comes to business and when it comes to transactions of services and goods, religiously, you can't differentiate between someone to your left and someone to your right. What that means is someone that you know or someone you don't know, for example. For that, my understanding is it's a sin. It's haram. It doesn't matter who the individual is, as long as they don't do harm to you, you're fine. So, it can be any religious individual, a Christian, a Jewish, a Muslim, myself, so another Muslim, so on and so forth. If I differentiate, so if I turn around and say, I'm going to move back a bit. <laughs> if I turn around and say, oh yeah, this guy is Muslim, so I'm going to treat him differently to the Christians, whether it be good or bad, that's a sin, that's wrong. So whatever money you make from that transaction, whether it's I treat you good or I treat you bad, the money's gonna be um, what we call halal. Halal meaning it's not gonna be, it's gonna be tainted. It's not gonna be halal, it's gonna be haram, which is tainted, haram means tainted. Some of you might know halal food, foods and you know, animal stores or what have you. Um, it comes down to money as well, it comes down to stuff like that as well, so even actions. Um, so yeah, so if I give somebody free stuff and I put it as, oh yeah, yeah, I'll give you this free thing because you're a friend, or because you're another Muslim guy, or you're this or that, I can't do that. They will make it tainted. They will make that money tainted. And what that means is that it leads me on to the second thing. Um, and I'll tell you guys why I brought this up. That leads me on to the second thing. The second thing is, I've, I'm no perfect individual. I don't think anybody is. You can't get perfect, okay? That's something I tell everybody when I do their car. You can't get perfect, you know? Like, you can go with, you can go after as much as possible. I can assure you, there's no such thing as 100%. And that, neither am I. But what I'll do is, I'll do my absolute best to be the best individual I can. I can be religiously, culturally, and spiritually. Now, religiously and spiritually is a bit different, meaning I believe in karma. In religion, it says do good unto your neighbor. It says that in, in Christianity, for example, do good unto to others, others do good unto you. Do good things, good things happen to you, karma, etc., etc. So I like to believe those and I like to intertwine them just a little bit to make myself a better individual, a human being. Right? And what that leads yeah, so that leads on sorry, that's we went on a different path. But what that leads on to is when a individual has given me money and the money is tainted, right? From that money I pay something called zakat. It's part of it. The five things that a Muslim must do. One of them is zakat, second one is prayer, third one is no particular order, but third one is, is hajj and there's two more, I forget the, 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 the last two. I think one's sacrificial, so you sacrifice something, then the name of uh, Prophet, or, and there's another one, I forget, I forget the other one. I will find out the other one for you guys. But these these two, I, I like to I like to practice a prayer and as a cat. So when I pay, to catch is a, is, a, um, is a charity. So you do, you have to do charity every year, so every, Every year, you've, let's say for example, you've got ten thousand pounds set up in a in, in somewhere. You've just got it. It's not really doing anything. It's your savings, whatever. It's not doing anything. From that money being in there from the first minute to the, from the first day to the three hundred sixty-fifth day, so the whole year after that money being there and not being touched, um, you pay two point five percent of that money. To charity, um, 
that's literally it. There's no nothing else. I'm trying to think. Can you move the camera closer? Because I don't even know if you guys can see me. Um, I'm using a broom. Um, yeah, so. That looks about right. Brilliant. Yeah, so it's about 2.5% from that money from the first day and last day. If that money's not being used, it's just there and there's no anything with it and there's nothing happening with it. And um, you might be saying, uh, off topic, interest in any way, shape or form is, is tainted. It's tainted money, so you can't ask for interest for anything. So if you give somebody £10,000, they, they give you back £10,000 on that date. They don't, there's no, yeah, there's, or you give back. 10% more away. That's wrong. Anyway, um, so these two things. So that leads me on to the cat. And then, so when I've got this money and the money's tainted, and I go and do my charity with it, you know, the, the money's a sinful money. So the, the, the charity becomes sinful as well. So in that sense, I've lost out two deeds, basic deeds, which is working hard and providing for your family. That's, a, believe it or not, that's a deed. Um, same way as smiling at someone, you know, little smile, that's a deed, that wasn't really a smile, but you get what I mean. Um, so it's working off the sweat of your brow, that's also a deed, um, and it encourages people to do the right thing, you know. Um, so yeah, so that, in that sense, I've lost out in two, two ways I can become a better person, essentially, you know, however you want to say it. And um, what that does is, first, first things first, it's a sin, so that messes with your, you know, religious situation. Um, second thing it does, it messes with your karma because you've treated somebody different to, uh, to someone else. Um, and last but not least, it, 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 the, the, the charity that you've done because it's with, even if you've got great intentions, doesn't mean anything. So, um, so that's very important. And the reason I brought this up is because I use a, basically a website, I developed a website to find out the prices of cars, meaning, say for example, you come with a Fiat 500 or you come with a Volvo XC90, whatever it may be, I give you, I put it into that website, I put in what you want, what coating you want, how long it's going to take, this, that and the other, and then we'll calculate what price it will be. So it doesn't matter who you are, what background you're from, what creed you're from, what religion you're from, that price is still always going to be the same. So if you come with the same car and you want the same coating and you're going to take the same amount of time and this, that and the other, whether you're this guy, that guy, that guy, this religion, this background, this faith, this guy, this whatever, it will always be the same. So that in that sense, it will keep my money um, not tainted. It will make it halal. Um, this has been really long, long winded, but the reason I, I like to start from the bottom so that everybody understands, you know, my standards and even if one person watches this I'm happy because there's you know one other person saw it and one other person understands what I'm about. Uh, that's basically it and I had a gentleman ask me about prices and he asked me is there you can sort me out a discount you know this that and the other um, because he brought up something religious I was like sorry bro I can't really do that the fact that you've asked me is automatically goes against xyz and it was easy because he was Muslim so I could you know, I can quote him the, the, the actual paragraph that says that you can't do that in the holy book. Um, so that was pretty easy. But um, for anyone else out there, that's what I do. That's how I operate. And, um, and yeah. Going back to what I said in the first place in terms of discounts. I do have discounts for individuals that have put themselves in front of what I see is danger to keep other people um, well, and that's armed forces and the NHS. I believe those two things are very important. Um, those two careers are very important, so as much as I can do, they are discounts for those individuals. Um, those two things, what else? Let me just quickly think. Yeah, and that's basically it. And you might be thinking, Casey, why have you brought this up? Well, the reason I brought that up is, one, I want people to understand what I'm about, Secondly, I want people to understand that the reason I'm doing these things is so that everybody's on the same, um, in the same circle. It doesn't, nobody gets treated differently 
and if it has a knock-on effect to someone else and someone else then we actually begin to love our neighbors whoever they are whatever color whatever religion whatever creed whatever it may be um and yeah that's basically it i hope you guys like this bit um this is something very important to me and that's why i like to share with you guys i'm gonna turn on all this now Oh, engine bay detail. God damn. That's what have been taking out of these areas. Alright. I hoovered up the rest. Okay. Oof. Yeah, that's not too great. That's a shop vac by the way. That's used for everything. 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 Alright. This is, this is the other side. This one on this side was worse. I'm gonna take some pictures and get started. And voila, so we've just got some areas that need drying. No dressing. You know, if it's, I mean, this is a 2000 and, this is a six year old car? Five year old car? Yeah, five year old car, going on six. Well, we're still going to dress it, I'm just, you know, nice job. So it is 17, 10, 5, or oh, actually, it's 10 past 5, there we go. Um, at this point, I have spent a lot of time cleaning this car properly. What I mean by that is really getting into those grooves and gunks and so on, um, you can see. The debris there, um, into those corners, flushing them out, into the corners again, flushing them out all the way through. I've done a general wipe down. You can see here, a general IPA of the of the paint, um, prepping it for polish. Uh, engine bay is done. Um, in here, this was all gunked up, all gunked up all the way round. Um, main area was you can even see, still see it where I haven't wiped it down. Down here, that is still, it was still gunked up, which is really annoying because obviously you want to do this well when it's, um, when it's what's the word I'm looking for? When it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When it's outside and it's in, you know, you've got the pressure washer and. Yeah, so we did what we could with it. It's still, you know, it's still got water on it from when I washed it. So I'm mopping it up as I go along, as it dries and it drips down. Uh, good thing is we got uh, paint on the floor, which is waterproof paint. So all the water doesn't go anywhere, it just stays there. And then I've got the mop here. This is not the mop. Where's my mop? So this is my mop. You can see. It's pretty cool. This is an old generator that I used to use. Um, that's pretty much it. Engine bay is done, everything's done. Happy days. But like I said, uh, it's still 10 past, 13 past. Like I said, I'm not really focused on the correction right now. I'm focused more on making sure everything's clean. I don't want to have to deal with um you know little things like that when it comes to correction so i'm going to take care of this i think that's the only thing that's left the bottom half i've wiped all the rest on there's nothing there's some ip residue left more ip here there's nothing that can hinder me or slow me down in terms of dirt clog up my pad nothing like that that's pretty cool that's amazing so what i'm gonna do now just get a bottom half, you can see the bottom half still hasn't been done. Um, and yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. Let's keep going. All mopped up. Time for a little break. And uh, that's basically it. No break, let's have a little break, no break. Hungry as hell. Let's get to it. 
so guys check this out so yeah look at these pictures it is bad it is in a bad bad state this car is what five six years old and boy oh boy she she needs all the help she can get um yeah it's, it's not good at all check out did you see that xc90 jesus right well yeah there you go Welcome back. I've had my uh, I don't know, dinner, late lunch. I don't know what it's called. Long story short, we're here looking at this. Goes all the way here. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, excuse me. And it comes back down here. And this is pretty bad. I guess I don't need to put a light on it. It's pretty bad. Oh yeah, and the paint's pretty bad as well, but we're just looking at deep scratches right now. We've got the swirls, we've got the medium scratches, we've got nasty things like that. This, that's all needs to get wet sanded out. Scrapes, your tailgate area stuff, you know, taking stuff out, putting stuff back in. It happens. Badges, obviously. Um, at some point, this has been resprayed. Got some lacquer peel there. We need to be careful of. Um, this one's a bit nasty one. And a few other bits and bobs. There's one here. Handles underneath the handles. Really bad driver side. Don't pay too much attention to stuff like that. That's just. Um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Lubrication from the from the do 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 from the clay lube, and that's pretty much it. So you've got some dressing poking out from the engine bay that needs to get. So I side the sanding on this nasty one here. And then I realised I should make a video show you guys. Let's take some pictures. Let's get a crack here. And got some more dressing leaking out from underneath there as well. Yeah, boy. Morning peeps, same hat, same shirt. Um, not the exact same shirt, you know. It's, it's got a bunch of shirts, they're all the same. I don't know why I took that right that. Um, right, so I just want to quickly show you guys what we've been working on. Um, I've been doing the test panels and I'll explain to you why I'm doing a test panel on the door. So, this tape represents a polish mark there. Cause I'm just going after the, I'm not going after the, the wet sanding marks. I'm just going after uh, the swirls and scratches or what have you. And that looks good to me. We got a little bit of a haze cause I haven't IPA'd it. So sure you understand, but this is what it used to look like. Let's try it here. It's a lot easier cause it's, the way light works, it's a bit, it's a bit funny. So this is what it used to look like, right? And this is what it looks like now, which is amazing stuff. Awesome beans. There's a, there's a deep scratch right there, you can see it. But then again, it's literally underneath. So I did it to the halfway point, as you can see. It's on, it's on this side. So what I do is I'm gonna start polishing from this point. So I polished all the way up to this point from that edge. And then I'm going to start polishing this side from here. So it overlaps by about two inches or an inch or two. Um, 
And the reason I'm doing the sides, I'm not actually doing the hood, is because I'm short and it's quite high up. Because um, it's all it's all thingies. Let's get to it. And here we are. So just this is just the video after the test spot video. So I've started sanding this area down as well. I was doing that last night. I went home and do, 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 do. what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so some of these are very deep. Um, I'm going to try and level up, level them up as much as possible, but I do want to get the polisher on there before I do any more sanding just so I can see what we're working with and what we've got left. Um, I deterred that these are not too deep, so I don't need to sand them. More sanding marks there. Yeah, there's one in the front door there. Working all the way around. These don't need sanding. You don't, you don't need to sand that. If you've got the right combination of stuff, you don't need to sand. So we've got this one as well. And yeah, and that's our test panel over there. Hood was pretty decent, but then again, I do need to wait until I need to get it back closer to the ground so I can have a deeper look. But from off the bat, as they say, it doesn't look like there's any major things. I mean, there's one dot there from, like, I'm guessing, bird poo. Uh, that's pretty much it. A few rock chips. There's a few deep scratches over here, but I felt them out. They're not anything. It needs to be wet sanded. Anyway, let's carry on. Welcome back guys, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, just a little update, so this is the third day, um, Monday, I spent just cleaning, it was just cleaning, got to do some wet sanding towards the end, but it was just cleaning, it was like a forest on a roof, you guys saw this, um, second day, so yesterday, um, mostly just compounding, doing nothing else, taping, compounding, compounding, taping, today we're still compounding, um, and I want to show you guys something, so we've got normal paint here, normal oh let's see you guys can see see i'll use a phone to record myself normal paint here metal then down here we've got plastic similar to the bumpers and obviously underneath we've got more plastic for these you have to change up your technique just a little bit because different paints behave differently on different uh, materials so the metal it's a bit more stiffer it's less rigid the plastic it vibrates more it's you know, um, I don't want to use the word soft, but it flexes more, it's more durable. Um, so you do have to play with the compounds and the polishes and the pads that you use, even sometimes machines, depending on if it, you know, uh, rattles or not. Um, I don't recommend using machines that do rattle, that will give you arthritis. Um, I mean, I'm in my twenties and I've got arthritis in my wrists. It's crazy. Both wrists as well. You know, I just wake up some days and my wrist is just numb. Um, from my wrist down is done. Um, that's basically it. Anyway, that's what we're doing. Uh, let's see, have a quick look at what we've got left. So, what we've got left, can you see the dirt underneath here? Dirt. Jesus. Um, right, so let's have a look at what we've got left. We've got some polish cane kicked up over there. We've got the top half to do. So, A-pillars, 
and the roof front and back it is panoramic roof so not all the roof but at least half of it um we've got the bottom half of these doors to do so from this line down both sides we've got also the rear bumper bottom half to do what you might call the diffuser so this bit here uh from this line down um so this is just a just our compounding stage nothing else just compounded oh and this corner of the bumper uh literally from right where was it from here or in this corner all the way down to this way um so that's what's left we've done the bottom the top half i'm talking about the, the bottom half uh, that's basically what's left. I've got, yeah, everything else is pretty much done. Mm, I'm trying to think. And obviously, interior detail to, to follow. Interior detail to follow. So basic clean, vacuum wipe down, sanitization and so on. So that's the third day. Oh, and the tyres, um, they should be here soon. So guys, on this one, you can see there's two different polishes, um, polish paste that I'm using. Just because I felt it wasn't, this one area wasn't really getting the same results as everywhere else. I felt like there was something going on here. So I had to use a combination of polishes to get the best result out of the paint. But um, it came out nice. And uh, yeah, uh, that's the story she told, I guess. Welcome back, guys. Thursday, so that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, fourth day. What have we done? Where right now we're just refining. So we're just still refining. So yeah, I was just thinking. Um, nothing really changed. Still at the same thing. What we've got left, essentially, big areas have been done, like from here down. To there below is three inch above is three inch hoods left to refine and the roof is left to compound and refine um i will get everything done apart from the roof today reason being i still need to go the tires back so the reason being for that is because it had been basically so you get a curb brush on the outside of the wheel there was this time there was some type of it was dented in from the inside of the face which is kind of hard to you know get right so they had to do some welding and stuff like that um but that's basically it obviously it's going to cost a little bit more but i'm not gonna i'm up up pay that out of my pocket because i don't you know, I don't, um, I don't go back on my word. I've already quoted a client. I'm not going to call him four days in and say, oh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit more. It's a bit, I, f I, I don't like that happening to me, so I don't expect it to do it to someone else. Um, that's basically it, literally. Literally just picked up the new wheels. Well, not new wheels, the new and refurbed wheels. The new, re the refurb new wheels, the refurbed wheels. Okay, let's have a quick look. Right, back to what I was saying. So I just really got a really weird phone call. It was like, it was a computer. You can clearly see, it was, clearly tell it was a computer. It was like, oh, you hit. There's a note on my car. You've hit my car. You so hold on, hold on, hold on. You're admitting this. I'm like, who's this? Hello. And it was a complete. You can hear it was a computer because. It's, Anyway, you know there's, we've heard that you've been in an accident, all of that BS. Anyway, back to the wheels, all right? Let's have a quick look. So you can see, this is the state of the wheel. This is one of the worst ones we 
got refurbed. I mean, if you zoom in, then you can tell. But if you zoom, don't zoom in, you can't really tell. Anyway, let's have a quick look. It, we had to take it down over here just a bit, just because that area was completely gone. I mean, completely destroyed. And there was another area somewhere, I believe, in here somewhere. One of these, I believe. I might be wrong, but essentially something had hit it from this angle um, and pushed it all the way in. That was a bit of a headache, but all in all, came out very, very nice. It is dirty, however, obviously when they put their tires back on, they have to put it in a, a bucket, a um, bucket of water. And yeah, we're gonna take these caps off. I need to take these caps off and clean them properly. Um, other than that, beautiful beans. Very, very good job. Let me see. Don't know what that says. Oh, it says Volvo. Beautiful. Let's carry on. Welcome back, guys. And what, what a week so far. Um, on the last leg of it, we'll be doing the coating today. Um, we, so in this in particular, what I'm doing right now. If you guys notice. I'm using a two inch backing plate because this fell, the bracket here broke off, the one inch backing plate de demolished, half of it's still stuck inside the um, the rotary head. Um, I'm going over it with a DA head because there was some slight holograms. I'm just going to carry on doing the whole thing, but there were some slight holograms right here because um, I used the rotary head to cut as fast as possible but yeah the most efficient really um but yeah i keep having to go over there and blow this out because it gets a bit too warm i've done all the arches um only this one had holograms but i just went over all the arches just to make sure everything was consistent um, that's pretty much it hopefully we'll do the coating today wheels came back i'll have a look at that in a second and yeah wheels, oh, i talked about the wheels actually earlier so the thing is, because it takes multiple days to do a car, um, I spent about anywhere between 11, 10 to 12 hours. So around 11 hours each day. This has been here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's over 50 hours already. Saturday, uh, that's 60 hours. And today's Sunday, so we're over 60 hours anyway let's carry on so today's the seventh day today's the last no excuse me this was dropped on to, off to me on Monday morning. Today's Monday afternoon, so this is the eighth day, okay? On the eighth day. Medium dirt. Bad dirt. Going in the bin. I think that's like four or five. Can be salvaged. This definitely is going to get salvaged, but these can be salvaged. This is the eighth day, okay? So we're looking at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sorry, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, 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 twelve. 13, 14, oh, that's going to drop, right, right who's at 12, right, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, one more, 18, so that's 18 on the 18, on the 8th day, that's minus what I used for the last seven days prior, okay? Forget about the seven days, that's just one. 
I don't know if I counted this one, but that's 18. And these ones are for the wheels and some areas in the archer that I missed. Furthermore, this is for the glass that I um, took the glass protection off with. These two, and these are my applications for that. What's going on guys? Welcome back, welcome back. So we're done with the Volvo behind me, as you can see. Beautiful thing. I'm just standing like this so the number plate doesn't show. Um, let's have a quick look around, see what we did, what we didn't do. We did everything, but let's have a look. Right, first things first, we debadged it, polished underneath it, coated it, and then put the badges back on. Um, that's the Volvo and the XC90 over here. Um, I use, uh, oh, for the badges, I use um, frames uh, from dealership and whatnot. Uh, there's a bit of dust on her, but yeah. Finger, finger mark, I haven't given it a final wipe down, but yeah, we did interior as well. The interior was a light interior. It wasn't, excuse me, one second. Okay, it was a piece of dust that fell up. Um, what was somewhere there? It was a light interior, a basic service. So glass wipe down, sanitization, etc. Finished off with KC details. Air freshener, wheels got refurbed. Caps got polished. Whole car got a four stage. So in some areas we have like something like this. This is a lot worse. I'm gonna put a little video before, during and after uh, in a second. It was a lot worse than that. Man, I hate my fingerprints. Um, yeah, stuff like that. We got wet sanded down. Then we obviously compounded it, medium compound and then final refining. Some areas I refined it with two polishes, not just one. So some, some areas was actually five stages, not four. And and yeah, so that's basically it. We are all done. I've literally just got to take a few photos, like the before and after photos for Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, Casey underscore details. The logo should, should look something like that. Um, that's basically it. Happy days. So, so I want to show you guys something. So I was like, oh my God, look at that scratch. I could have forget that scratch. Guess where it is. I looked over here and I saw this. It's flipping spiderweb. Scared of daylights on me. Another client, he's done. And there you have it people, all done. Happy days, client was very, very happy about it. He said it looked better than the day he bought it. Bearing in mind it's a 2016, a 16 plate Volvo. He said it looked better than the day he bought it. And I, so that means I took off five years 16 plate is registered in 2000 actually 2000 end of 2015 so 15 to 2021 six years five to six years let's say five years i took five years off I, i'm so happy right now because that's what that's what we do it for and at the end of the day yes you do get paid and it's for your services but you gotta feed not just your pocket you gotta feed your mind you gotta feed your soul as well your mind is you know getting rid of something you know like the scratch and it's and the swells your soul is that that's what feeds your soul your client going you know what 
I'm ex- I was expecting 90%, you've done 150. 